Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Andrew from the Options Millionaire community and today we're going to be talking about Bookmap. This video will be for anyone who is either new to Bookmap and wants to learn more or if you want to brush up on the structure of Bookmap and how I utilize it to make better entries. What is Bookmap? Bookmap is a depth visualization tool for monitoring liquidity and order flow in the market. I kind of use it as a map. When I've got levels plotted on my charts, support, resistance, supply, demand, pivot zones, whichever it is, the book map allows me to really tell which ones are going to be truly respected, which ones are real pivots in the market. And if I can correlate those to my plotting and my analysis on the charts, it gives me a great deal of confidence. It allows me to really refine and pinpoint exactly where the major order flow is in the market, where the big players, keyword there, the big players want to start placing their trades and their orders. If I can identify those and be on the right side of those trades, then I can make a good decision on whether or not to enter or exit or manage a trade. All right, so go ahead and dive it into the bookmap application here. I personally use the standalone software, which is what something you download to your desktop. But right off the bat, obviously we have the main heat map. This is gonna be the visual representation of the order flow. To the right, we have the COB, which is a current order book. That is a numerical or graphical representation of pending orders actual on the book. So when I'm watching order flow come on here, I'm going to see it visually and then I'm going to verify it numerically on the COB. To the right of that is the SVP, which is the session volume profile. This is a representation of transacted orders on the book. Now, if you followed me before, you know that I am a very big believer in volume profile on my charts. And this is just another way to graph that on the heat map. Now, if you see this yellow dotted line here, that is actually the SVP POC, which is the point of control. That is the highest volume node of transacted data on the charts. And you can see if you come all the way to the right, all the way you see that the highest volume right here correlates with this yellow dotted line. Now, next below is CVD, which is cumulative volume delta. Now this is a cumulative volume changes based on volume track. Basically it's an aggregate of buyers and sellers. It's represented in two different ways. One here is what you see is the number. Two is the sub chart indicator, which is line. Now this line will go up or down and fluctuate based on the, C the CVD increasing or subtracting the aggressors in the chart. It's a good way to tell when the buyers are hitting the tape or where the sellers are hitting the tape in aggregate, and that's the whole point. And after that, you see these two things down here above CVD that stops and icebergs. Now, before I dive into this, you have to know that Bookmap offers a ton of different add-ons. It's very, very customizable to your style of trading and what your needs are. Now, I personally only have two active add-ons. It's the stops and iceberg on chart and sub chart indicator. It's split up in two different things. The on chart, which is a representation here you see, the red dots are the stops and the icebergs are represented in blue dots. You currently do not see any icebergs on here, but you will later. Under is another line chart similar to the CVD. The red is the stops and the blue is the icebergs. And you'll see this one fluctuate as the orders come on and off the book. Now, what do those do? Well, the iceberg indicator are buy or sell limit orders that have been split into smaller limit orders to hide the total quantity. And obviously they name that iceberg because you know the term tip of the iceberg where you see an iceberg floating and the majority of the mass is actually under the water. You can't see it. Now, the best way, in my opinion, the beauty of the iceberg orders is the evolution of the order itself. Because having just a standalone iceberg order doesn't necessarily tell you anything, but if you see the iceberg order start to inflate to a large degree, for example, if it starts out at 100 and starts to pop to 200, 400, 600, 1,000, 1,500, so on and so forth, you could really start to drive sentiment from that from either a short-term or a long-term trade analysis perspective. Now, outside of that, we have the stops, which is the red dots and the red line. The stops is exactly what you would anticipate. It's the stop orders. It's exactly what you look for in terms of stops executing in the market, and it's something you'd want to really look for to avoid identifying stop runs so you're not manipulated out of your trade. Because stop runs are a very real thing. And if you can identify where the major stop runs are, if you have a very large influx of stop orders, you can identify that and trade around as such. All right, so next I'll go over my settings. First thing you want to do is come up to the top and hit the settings bar, come down to configuration. This is going to be my general settings here. Nothing crazy. For the most part, it is standard. Up top here, you do have the heat map settings. You could change the heat map to grayscale. You could change it to just two colors, or you could change it to multiple colors all the way up to red. This is what I prefer so I can quickly identify 
where the big orders are. On top of that, you want to configure add-ons. So you, have, you go back up to settings, you go to configure add-ons, and this is where you configure all your different add-ons. You see, I have two additional add-ons here, the Liquidity Tracker Pro and the Market Pulse. I do not have those activated. Right now, I strictly have the on chart and sub chart stops and icebergs indicator. Now, one more thing to add here is that you do need to be signed up for the MBO package, which is an additional package on Bookmap to get access to all these indicators. Highly worth it if you're gonna be doing active trading and you're gonna be tracker of the order book. And now if you'd like to draw anything on your chart, some people like to draw notations or if you're doing any analysis, you can come up here and edit drawing tools and you could draw pretty much anything you'd like. Text, ellipse, rectangle, line, uh, put them on the charts, do whichever you need to do. And then you can come out here and just clear drawings when you are done. After that, you can configure the actual heat map itself Go up to studies configuration, volume dots. Now, what are the volume dots? The volume dots are these guys right here. A lot of people ask me, hey, what are those bubbles on your chart? All it is is a bubble or graphical representation of volume. It's a good visual way to see quickly when volume is entering or leaving the market. And down here is how you adjust the bubbles because you can see here that I've got it set as one, which means that even at one order, which is very, very small, you'll see it show up in terms of the price action. Now you can change this to filter out the small stuff. You can say, for example, I wanna see a minimum of 25 order bubbles come up on these charts. And you see right here that a lot of the bubbles go away. Now it only shows orders of 25. Or you can come up even higher and go to 50 and you'll see even more bubbles come away right here. Bam, so you see even more bubbles now and you just have the line behind it with very few bubbles. So I know these bubbles are orders of 50 or more. And you can make this as big as you want to custom tailor to your experience. So if you want to make very, very large whale orders come in, then you can set it for like a thousand and only thousand orders will come across. Very, very helpful to filtering out what you want. After that, you can go to the heat map itself and you can change the actual density or the overall view of the heat map lines themselves. The big takeaway for customization, in my opinion, is going to be filtering out the small stuff. I don't really care about the onesies and twosies of the market. I want to see when the big dogs are stepping into the market so I can get on the right side because the whole point of tracking order flow is to be on the same side as the whales as many times as you can. And if you could accomplish that, it's going to greatly increase your chances of a profitable trade. All right, so now I'm going to get into how I utilize Bookmap. And knowing what Bookmap is, it's a visual representation of the order flow in the format of a heat map. Now, the deeper the red, the denser the order flow is at a particular number. And I use that to develop a thesis around the day. The first thing I'm looking for is really a skew right out of the bat. So here at market open, I'm going to look to see if the order flow is skewed to the south or skewed to the north. Do we have more orders south or more orders north of our position here to start to develop where the market really wants to go? And the whole theme to this is I want to be on the same side as the big money as many times as I can. So I want to track the big orders, the 500, 800 to 1000 orders and plus. Right now, you see out of the gate, we don't really have very much at this particular setup. A couple of 200, 230, 280, uh, 118, all this smaller stuff here, nothing really crazy here. If you zoom out a little bit, we don't really have any outlier data just yet. Now, this is just market open here, and I want to walk through this setup in this current day. So I picked this day specifically because the liquidity shifts were very obvious. They shifted the liquidity and the levels were respected very well. So I wanted to show you this. It was a great example of identifying the liquidity shifting the market for a pivots. This is what the chart looked like. It was a strong sell-off in the morning with a strong recovery in the afternoon. And I'm gonna pinpoint the exact liquidity shift to help you identify when this particular setup could take place. So right at the gate here, and we are at 44.40 or so. You see that you know, we don't really have too much liquidity. We have a small stuff right up here at 44.50. Uh, 44.30 right here. The market just now opened. That's why you saw the liquidity shift in and out. Uh, but you see there's nothing really going on right now. There's nothing crazy. I usually don't trade the first half hour here, so it's not. it doesn't really bother me. Uh, there's not really that much liquidity. But you see, as we start to roll over, there's a couple of things. I'm going to hit pause. Uh, a couple of things as we roll over here is that they start shifting liquidity lower down to 44.20. And this thing just popped up as well, 44.25, while nothing else is up top. Uh, also, if you notice, the CVD is becoming more and more negative. So the aggregate sellers are really starting to hit to the tape to the tune of negative 19,000. That's an extremely red CVD, which is telling us the order flow is extremely negative. The sellers are hitting the tape. You see, you see very large sell icebergs coming in and hit the tape here, and we're rolling back over. So I'm coming on down, and there's the first indication of something askew here. Uh, as we're rolling over, we have 44.20, but we see this big cat, 550 orders come up at 44.40. Now that's something to take note here because that is the first time we see any kind of liquidity come up here as we've come on down. We've dropped now from about 44.40 and change 
Uh, currently, we're all priced down to 44.26, and we have bottom liquidity at 44.20 here with nothing to the bottom. We have a couple of the small guys here, 4,400. Again, I don't really pay attention to the zero zero levels. Uh, but other than that, uh, all I'm doing here is identifying the managed liquidity where they're adding liquidity, where they're taking off liquidity. And if I'm thinking in terms of level two data, just raw numbers, which I used to use before Bookmap, is I'm trying to track where the orders are hitting. If I'm tracking that level two and the market is dropping, 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 and I start to see a bunch of big orders coming in up north, I'm going to start anticipating some sort of reversal once I have my VPA signals on price action. And at my pivot points, then I can say, all right, well, now it's time to start looking to go long here uh, up to about, you know, in this case, 4440. But we're not there yet. We're still dropping on down here. We still have major icebergs. The CVD is still pointing south here. Uh, I don't see any kind of recovery in the CVD. And we have liquidity down to 4420. So we keep on dropping on down here. And already right here, you see that they double down on 4420. So there's still more orders coming in 4420 as they're hitting very large icebergs. These are outlier icebergs. You don't usually see these every day. These 1,300, 8,800, 1,000, 1,600 icebergs coming in to show that they're really having a lot of liquidity dumped down here with a phenomenally negative CVD and with the liquidity posting at 4420. Now, as we come on down here, still note that there's not really any major orders coming in below 4420. In addition to this, I also know that 4420 is also about the weekly low. So there's going to be decent support sitting at 4420 just because of my chart analysis. So knowing that tied in with bookmap liquidity, it correlates that 4420 is hanging out right here. So hitting play again, we're going to kind of see how this thing shakes out. You see, you still see 4400 is on there. Uh, they are kind of adjusting this 530 year and change, doubling down on it a little bit. You see them increasing 4420 down here as well. Uh, but overall, and now they take off 4400 and right as they take off 4400, they add more to 4420 here. Some more order flow comes into 4420. And then we have this little bit turned down here. And this is where we start to make our move down into the 4420 area. So we come on down finally, we transact right into 4420, and this is where we start hanging out here. Now, typically, unless it's the first half hour of the day where there's super high volatility, you don't get some sort of crazy one-touch bounce and rocket. You, what you get is the auction. You get the big move down to create an imbalance. You get the auction house as buyers and sellers start to navigate a particular level. And then after about 30 minutes to 45 minutes or so, we finally, the buyers come in, and then we start to recover the market. Very rarely do we have a one touch bounce strong V without some sort of consolidation auction period. So now that we've come down into the 4420 area, that's what I'm gonna to start to look for here. We see the CVD is recovered into neutral range. Uh, we still have a couple of icebergs come in. They haven't yet added back 4440 yet, uh, but that's what we're gonna pay attention to. We haven't even yet transacted 4420 yet, but we're getting close. So boom, we finally transact 4420 right there. Uh, we actually came down and filled those orders and then still nothing big has come on below. In fact, what, what, what do I see here? Now that we've come down and transacted 4420, there's nothing being added below. So the momentum is starting to a little stifle to the downside. And they added back 4435, they added 4430 here. So as they've come down and filled all the major liquidity lower, now they've come up and now they're starting to add stuff higher. So immediately we start to see this little bit of recovery here. Uh, we start to fill a couple of major icebergs. Uh, we do have a major stop start to fill here as well as they're kind of maintaining this 4430. And even on the way up, they're not adding anything lower. In fact, look, They've already wiped out a good portion of that liquidity. So they canceled a lot of these orders here, shifted upwards, 4435, 4437, 4440 on the upside. And uh, off we go. And all I'm doing now is now that we've started to recover a little bit, it's only about a you know, 10, 12 point recovery at this point. Coming up here, now we're transacting even higher into 4430. And now they're even put on 4450. So 4450 on this particular session was also the prior session daily high so that was a decent pivot point to gun for so and now, now that the fact they're adding liquidity correlates again with my chart analysis just like 4420 did 4450 did as well but all i'm doing here is watching now the 4440 that was earlier finally just got transacted with a large iceberg just as we hit that as well cvd is now green you see the cvd has built back to green here they're coming up to 4445 and 4450 more icebergs coming in here so if you see the momentum shift is very clear it went from straight down with a very negative CVD, building more negative. You see the orders coming in lower, lower, lower with nothing above. And now that situation has flipped. The algorithms have flipped. Once they met the parameters of filling 4440, they did not add anything else lower. They added the, everything up higher, 4435, 40, 45, all the way up to 50 with a strong recovery. Not only that, they wiped all of this liquidity down here where we have this vast expanse of orders. There's nothing down here. And up we go. Nice recovery back up, 44.45. That pile everything up to 44.50. 
and that's pretty much where we end the day right up here into the 4450 range transacting through everything but that's how i utilize bookmap it's all just a representation of order flow it's it's just a fancy way to present order flow i'm a big big believer in tracking order flow i am of the opinion that if you can get a good grasp on analyzing volume the price action in order flow, that is the lifeblood of the market. And Bookmap is a fantastic tool to, for a visual aid to help track when the liquidity is being shifted and managed because managed liquidity is active liquidity and active liquidity most likely is going to be transacted. All this to summarize, what I'm looking for is shifts. Shifts in active liquidity. That's gonna tell me where I could start placing my pivots and placing my trades in addition to my chart analysis. Notice. It's in addition to my key system, which is volume price analysis. This alone is not gonna help you 100%. You have to have a baseline analysis of the market and then utilizing this tool to track order flow to compound on top of your system. It's just another tool that you can add and tracking order flow is incredibly, incredibly important. Hope you got a little something out of this video, a great video about Bookmap. I'm a huge, huge believer in this product. I'm also an affiliate of Bookmap, so if you'd like to sign up, use the link down in the description of the video. It'll help you get some money off your plan, whichever one you decide to use. If you have any questions further about this, or if there's anything I did not answer, you could come over to the Discord and shoot me a DM, ask some questions. I'll be happy to answer them for you. In addition to that, I also stream every Thursday with Bookmap on the Bookmap Discord server and YouTube channel at 1 p.m. Eastern Time or 12 p.m. Central Time, so you can come over and join and ask questions with that as well. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for taking the time. Time to watch this video. I'm out. See you.